So, uh, good morning. This is a class on making pickled herring. And what we're going to do is we're going to assemble a batch so that you'll know what to do when you get home. When you leave here, we will give you everything that you need to make the pickled herring. We'll give you the herring. We'll give you the sugar, the spices, the cheesecloth if you're going to make a, a spice bag, the string to tie it up, uh, the onions. You're going to get it all. So it's up to you what you, what you put in and what you do to finish up. Um, there's a, quite a few different recipes out there. But this recipe is from Glenn Kensmo. He used to do the classes here. And uh, it's a good class, so we kept it. And we're doing the same, same one. So make sure you take a recipe home with you with the rest of the stuff. Uh, if you just signed up for the class, take a recipe. Um, let's see, I'll go over the things that you're going to need to start. You're going to need a quart of vinegar, which would be two small pints, okay? But we're going to send you home with that. And you need the pickling spice. And we buy it by bulk, and then we measured it out and everything, and that's how you're getting yours in a, in a bag. But it would take two of these, okay, to make that uh, amount. And then on the bay leaves, probably the small one, but I don't think it comes in a small one, because you're going to end up with like 20 you know, uh, bay leaves in there. You only need eight or ten or something like that. So, uh, Then your onions. Now, on your recipe, it says four large onions. Well, that's before they came along with Costco and everything, and you got the gigantic onions. Uh, I've never used more than three. And this time, I'm here's what I cut up. And here's my leftovers. I'll probably go home and make some soup or something with the, with the leftovers. Uh, and then the herring. The herring is an Atlantic herring. The herring we get here is not, the waters aren't cold enough. So make sure if you uh, are going to order it on your own, get the uh, Atlantic herring. Most butchers will order it in for you or tell you where you can order it from. Uh, it's not that hard to come by because they get fish into Safeway, QFC, and all that stuff into their butcher shop. So if you talk to them ahead of time what you want, they'll see that you can get it. So it's not that hard to come by. The, as I said, the herring that we get are in sections, you know, uh, all cut up uh, into like cubes, inch by inch. They come in long strips. A filet will come out in a long strip. You, what you get is going to be in the cubes, all cut up for you and everything else. But sometimes if you order it from a butcher or whatever, you may get the filet. Then you just got to cut it up into the section that you want. On the recipe, it says for the onions, to slice thinly. I cut mine a little bit different. I cut it about the same size as the herring is, so that when I'm dipping in with a toothpick or whatever, I can grab a piece of onion and a herring, and I got everything, everything there all at once. And if you don't like the onion, it's easier to pick out and get away. Um, we use yellow onions. Um, you can use the red onions. No, don't use the red onions. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, It'll turn your fish and everything pink. Yeah. So, uh, so if you don't want white, it pink, use whiter, the white onions. Whiter yellow onions. The Walla Wallas are a little sweet, but uh, it, you, you, you can go along with that. But yeah, like you said, the red onions we gave out one year because it was festive. We thought we were going to have a good time. And it, uh, they, everything turned red, and everybody was a little thought maybe they did something wrong, you know, when they, when they got home. Um, I do have some uh, uh, herring here that has not been soaked. Nothing has been done with it except for taken out of the bucket. And I sliced up some little pieces and that you can try. It's quite salty. So, Seth, if you want to take that around and uh, 
And uh, if the, if you want to try it, go ahead. If you don't want it, because it is, it's very salty. And here's some napkins if you want to spit it out. And Mike, how is it preserved? Salt is what is preserving. That's why it is so salty. Uh, it's um, They didn't have res refrigeration many, many years ago, and so they had to do many, many different things to preserve items. Uh, uh, we had a LEFSA class last uh, weekend, and that was part of, LEFSA was part of preserving potatoes. You'd have leftover potatoes that if you, they had no refrigeration, so if you left them on the table th that next day, they were not any good. So if you took a little flour and mixed it into and rolled it out, you already had a hot stove, and threw it on the stove and cooked it, now it's going to last you for five, six days, you know, just laying out. So kind of a way of preserving everything. Well, salt is one. Dried is another. They had dried fish. They'd have uh, uh, dried uh, lamb. And they would, they would dry it out, put it out in the sun, hang the fish on, a, on the clothesline, uh, and it would uh, dry and make it, or pack it with salt. And they packed a lot of meats and, and uh, 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 fish and stuff to preserve it. Now, lutefisk is a different story altogether with preserving that. They did it with lye. So uh, you do the same thing. When you get it, you soak it, and you soak all that stuff out of it, and then you got a, an edible item that you can, uh, that's been reconstituted. Uh, so uh, it's quite, so how was the, uh, the here, a little salty for you? Uh, <laughs> the kids liked it. They said, uh, no? OK. Uh, <laughs> um, so you soak it for, oh, two hours, hour and a half to two hours, and then keep turning the water off, and then fill it up again, soak it a little bit, and then pour it off, and then soak it a little bit, pour it off, but it, it, and then let it rest in between the time. And about an hour and a half, two hours, you should uh, pretty well have most of the salt out. Yes, sir? Is it, is it a pill herring ever made with fresh herring? Uh, you wouldn't have the salt in it. You wouldn't have the flavor of the salt. And you wouldn't have any preservative in it. The salt is what preserves it, plus the pickling that we do. Because basically what we're doing right now is we are making refrigerated pickles. Anybody do them? And they usually, with making them with cucumber, will last you maybe a week in your refrigerator. Well, what happens there is it has nothing to do with the brine or the pickling. It has to do with the cucumber. Okay? So the things that you put into your herring, which is already preserved, it would last you two years probably in the refrigerator the way it is right now. Okay, um, and with us washing some of the salt out now, we're taking some of the preservative out of it, but we're pickling it, which is adding some of it back in. So if you took and put instead of onion, now the first thing that's going to break down is the onion. Okay, the herring will be fine, <laughs> you know, but the onion will start to break down. Um, if you put cucumber in there with it, you'd probably only last you about a week. You know, and then you'd be done because cucumber breaks down real fast. Now, if you wanted for uh, coloring or different uh, items to put in your pickled herring, you could probably put some pickled pimento for color. You could probably put some uh, 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 green uh, green uh, uh, peppers uh, pickled. You know, spiced green peppers, or maybe the spiced. Uh, pickled uh, uh, green beans uh, or, or pickled uh, vegetable carrots and stuff like that. But those are the things that are going to break down first, but they're pickled, so that'll help them last longer because they're already pickled. The things that we have over there for, for you to taste, the uh, um, ones uh, mixed in honey mustard, and one is mixed with cocktail sauce. And do, if you do that, only do it like the day before you're going to have a party. 
because it'll last maybe a, a week in your refrigerator mixed with that, but you're, you're challenging it now. So don't mix that up ahead of time and then jar it and give it to somebody and they think, oh great, this is all set, you know. So uh, you have to keep uh, your pickled herring in the refrigerator because um, again, it's like a, a cucumber uh, refrigerator pickle, you know. Uh, so it, when I go to the fishmonger and I say I want Atlantic herring, do I say that I want preserved Atlantic herring ready for pickling? Tell or? them what you want to do, most definitely. The question was, you know, what do, what do I ask for? Uh, tell them what you want to do. You want to make some pickled herring. And what you've used in the past is uh, pickled herring in or herring in salt brine, okay? And because uh, we, we get it by the five gallon bucket mm -hmm. and then we broke it down to five pound uh, packages for you to take home and the recipe is to match the recipe that you got. Um, so make sure you tell them what you want to do with it and uh, they'll, they'll get it for you, okay? okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so basically you couldn't take a filet because it's not been brined and salted. You should have the salted uh, brined herring that's been preserved in salt uh, so that you can rinse that salt off anyway. Because that's your preservative, okay? Uh, that, that, that lasts forever. If you. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, if it should be frozen or not, I've never seen it come frozen. So if you're going to take it home and freeze it, I would say because of the, the everything, that's, it probably is going to get soft on you when you thaw it back out. Um, so uh, that's a different way of, of pickling. After it's pickled, I don't know if you could freeze it and, and then thaw it out later. Freeze it in the brine, you know, put it in a container, put it in a plastic bag, okay? Leave air so it wouldn't burst it and freeze it and try it. I don't, you know, you're going to be doing some experimenting with this recipe that, that you're going to try different things. For instance, we did a batch and put a little aquavit in it, you know. Uh, somebody asked, can I use uh, uh, white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar? Uh, yeah, it's vinegar. It'll work, okay. Um, again, in the recipe, it says if it's too, uh, too uh, uh, sweet or too bitter, put a little more sugar in, you know. If it's too sweet, then put a little more vinegar in it. Uh, so you, you can do that as you're, as you're tasting yourself. And you can taste the brine as you're cooking it to see if you need to add more of a particular ingredient in, yeah. it's not going to hurt you. The uh, the brine, is, uh, two different ways you can do it. Now we gave you the workings for a spice bag, and this is a spice bag. I put all the spices in there. I took the corners, pulled them all together, put a string around it, tied it tight. Okay, and all the spices are in here. But I like a little bit of spice floating around in my pickled herring, a little bit. Some people like a lot. Well, I hate to fight through the stuff that's all floating around in there to find a nice piece of herring. So I put a little, so I mix a little bit in with the brine as I cook it, and the rest goes in the spike spice bag. Now, you leave the spice bag in there because you want all that flavor from the spices to go into the brine, okay? so. And with all that flavor in there, and then get mixed in with the herring, you want the brine to mix in with the herring to get the flavors, okay, and to help pickle and preserve it. And it takes about a week to 10 days sitting in the, in the brine before you bottle and jar it, okay? That's too little? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the more it sits in there, the more flavor melds into the rest of it. So um, 
you know, you can do it within the, say you want to give away some for Christmas and you're rushed. Eh, you're you're going to get, you're, you're going to be okay, you know, and they'll, they'll, they probably won't like it as well as they're letting it sit, but it'll, it'll work. Yeah. It's like tea. The longer you let it steep, the stronger it's going to get. And it's all good. Yes. So I'm going to use a glass jar when I do it today, so you can all see what I'm going to be doing here, okay? And, um, but you could use a jar like this. You know the big crocks that you see? Some of them are huge and they're heavy, they're thick. There's one sitting right outside the front door, but it's so big that you, you, you wouldn't have room for it. Those were pickling crocks. And they would sit on somebody's back porch in the wintertime, you know, uh, or, or in the fall of the year or whatever. And they would put all their pickles and stuff in there because it's a big, heavy crock. It would hold the, the coolness over, you know, get cool overnight and then hold it throughout the day. And so that's what they pickled everything in. And then they just put a, a piece of wood over the top of it or something, to, uh, or canvas even, you know, to keep any critters out. But that's the way you used to pickle, you know. Um, if you don't have a big crock like this, and a lot of people say, I don't have a refrigerator big enough I can put something like that in there. Use plastic bag. But use, try and get the plastic bag with the zipper. Um, you don't want that to break open. They come in two gallon or one gallon. This is a one gallon. They come in all, all different sizes. Uh, but one thing that's nice about it, and I may not have room for all of mine in here, so I may use a, a part, of, part of it to go into, you know, the, the, the bag. But um, I will then change it later on because I want all that to come out even, you know. So if you use a bag and you use a couple bags, say, then it, every so often mix them. Put them back in a big bowl and mix them and then put them back in the bag, you know. Every so often in your refrigerator, take the bag and turn it over. You want these juices to mingle in with everything else. Okay. Um, and it's really kind of a good way to do it when you stop and think about it. They didn't have anything like this years ago. And because you can mix everything, you can mush it around and get it all to blend in. Uh, so I'm gonna start to blend this together. As of right now, do we have any questions out there? No? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna put a little bit of onion in the bottom. And you start by layering this, but then after a bit, you're, it's all going to get mixed together. But for a start, try and get it to, to be as blended as much as you can. Um, now this has all been soaked for about an hour and a half. Water drained off. Um, I like herring better than I do onions. <laughs> and, and maybe that's why I end up with onions I can take home and make soup. <laughs> the herring with the bone in it. I have... I have, I have a, it, it, that's a, no, the question, the question was, yeah. um, the question was the herring with the bones, and I, I haven't 
had with the bones, uh, but I, somebody else then mentioned sardines. Now sardines are canned. They're cooked, okay? And uh, pick, uh, canned salmon uh, is cooked with the bones in. And those, because they're done under pressure and everything, the bones just, you could just about bite down on them and eat them, you know, they're, they're, that, they're that good. Um, so do not, when you make the brine, do not pour the hot brine over the herring. It has to be cooled back down before you add it. Make sure your, ha your brine is cooled before you add it to the herring because you would end up then cooking it, which is a good way of preserving it, but it entire, tastes entirely different. Um, what do you do to keep it from getting soft? Keep it nice and firm. Well, the pickling, the vinegar in there and everything, the pickling is going to help. Um, and part of it is the preparation, the soaking, um, but Age is what is making it soft. No, but what do you do to keep it firm, not soft? Well, when you first do it, it's going to be fine, and it's not going to be soft. But then uh, in, say, uh, two months' time, it may start to get soft. Then just eat faster. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to take my spice bag and put it right on top. And when I pour the juices in here, if it doesn't cover all the onions and the herring, then I would need to set a jar of water and push it down, OK? And try and get then I try and get a jar that was maybe as big as the opening here. If it's not, if it's if it's a, like this, I would take a pipe plate or whatever, sit it in there, so it would push everything, down, and then put the bottle of water on top of it to push everything down to keep the juices covering the herring and the the onions. Um, the out of this batch, you you should get six pints. You know, where you can give to friends, depending, because uh, there's a bunch of jars back uh, by that big long table uh, that I put up there that I saved from peanut butter and mayonnaise and stuff like that. They'll work, you know, if you want to put it in a jar, but they're all different sizes. So I hate to say, well, you're going to get exactly this, or you're going to get exactly that. Or, and if you use more onions, you may, you know, get a lot more jars, you know. Um, so when you, when you jar them up and you want to give them to a friend, uh, yeah, after you jar them up, keep them in your refrigerator and give them to your friends or whatever with a little bowl on top around the holiday time, you know, uh, or if you're going over to visit to say, Hey, I brought some snacks, you know, so it's a, it's a good icebreaker. Um, and, uh, it will be, as I said, it'll be all ready to go uh, in a week, but you know, you can do it in a couple of days. Um, isn't it? Now I've got quite a bit left here. So I'm going to take some of the spices so they'll float around in there. And when I'm all done, when I package them up into jars to give away, I will take this spice bag out and throw it away. It's, it's done. Um, you may find, depending on how tight you packed the fish into the jar to brine it, that if you shake it a little bit, air bubbles will come up yeah. and the 
uh, fluid level will drop. So just keep an eye on it as it so, sits. As I said, I layered this all the way up. I may, say in a couple days, dump it all into a big bowl, mix it up, and then throw it back in, and I won't layer it that time. Okay. What I'm looking for is to try and evenly get the juices to meld in with everything else. Okay. Any more questions? So this is ready to go in a refrigerator. And a uh, couple days I'll come back, check it, stir it, put everything back in, leave it in a couple more days. When I get ready to put it in jars, I'll jar it up and find some nice people to give it to. Now, when we buy them in the store, the jars are, of course, all sealed. Yes. Um, so we don't have to worry about the canning process or anything like that. that you well, those, one, those you find in the store, they're all sealed, but they're not canned. They're not canned. So no, no. Okay, so we just put a lid on it. We don't have to have mason jars, any kind of fancy jars. Nope. Any jar will work. Okay. A any jar will work. And, uh, yeah, you definitely do not want to can because then you'd end up cooking it because you, you uh, and you don't want that. Okay. Yes, sir. The, the, is there a specific thing of pickling spices or is there, can you buy that? We, when you go, you go in the grocery store and it says right on there, pickling spices, and you would need two of those uh, if you're going to make a batch. By, we're going to give you everything today. You know, you'd be all set with that. Um, but uh, if you're going to buy more or whatever, you would need two of those. You would need two, uh, well, enough to make a quart. Uh, you, can buy a, you can buy a gallon and, you know, mix it off. Because uh, that would be... Mike, this is eight tablespoons of spices. Yeah. It looks like a lot more, two of those. No. We, we've actually measured it out, and it takes two of these bottles. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, last year, I got 11 pints. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. I don't know if I... I don't think I added more onion. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Because the onion's good pickled like this, you know, and it, it's going to be the first thing that really starts to break down and start to get mushy will be the onion. Uh, any, anything you put in there, will break down before the herring because the herring has been preserved in salt and you know the moisture is what's going to make it soft you know the the water that we put it because we did put some water in there uh, and so that's what is what's going to start to make it soft and the amount of jars you get out of it is also dependent on the size of pieces that you have and how tight you pack it in if you really stuff it in there and pack it down, you're going to get fewer jars. But if you leave it fairly loose, you'll get more jars out of it. Yeah, now I have some brine left over here, you know. So uh, uh, if uh, I had more onion in there, I'd probably have more brine left over. Uh, okay. This as it stands now, you can pretty much do your jarring and you're going to have herring all year long because it's going to last until the next Christmas. Well, not me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, won't, it won't last me as long as, uh, well, I give quite a, quite a bit away too. Uh, uh, but both my girls this year are making their own herring, so uh, uh, I won't have to give so much away. There'll be more left for me. So. Uh, so when we jar it, do we jar it with the brine? You'll jar it with the brine, okay. but not the spice bag. Okay. Spice bag you'll throw away. Oh, yeah. 
That, but it should stay in there. It, it, I leave it in there as long as I can, you know, and then from that point on. And that's why uh, little pieces of stuff floating around with it, not too bad, you know. It, 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 it's kind of a surprise once in a while you bite down on a peppercorn, you know, it kind of wakes you up a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's all set to go. Um, so my batch is done. Hey, I got nothing. How long have you left in the refrigerator now? One to two days? Have you gone up to like a week or? Oh yeah, it 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 it's the same as if you pickled it separately in jars. You get a stronger spice to it the longer you go out. So you mm, probably... After that point, you're pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, after after two weeks, there's no sense of pickling anymore. It's soaked up just about everything it can. Um, Tell them about the special one. The Akavit? Yeah. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, anybody know what Akavit is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, we got a lot of hands go up on that one. <laughs> so, so what we did is when we filled the, uh, the jars, uh, we put in only j juice of half full. And then we put Akavit in the rest of it. And it was quite flavorful. Uh, <laughs> and, and hey, uh, the juice is good on its own. Well, with a little Akavit in it, it's probably just a little bit better with a little shot glass of that, you know, because you can still drink it. It's alcohol in it, you know. So, um, yeah, it, it was pretty tasty. The only other thing to mention is what we were talking about. I was in Sweden visiting relatives in April, and they had their crop, their small crop. Yeah. And one of them he made was really, really good. It had citrus in it. Oh, I he bet, yeah. He put in slice, just the skin. Okay. He, it's just really small slices, really, okay. really thin of lemon and lime. And it was just the um, I would stick to the peel. Yeah, that's what he did. Uh, yeah, and, uh -huh. and take off some of the soft part of the inner, inner part of the peel uh, so that you're left more with the skin. Because as I said, anything you put in there, that's what's going to break down mm -hmm. those things. But if it's pickled already, like pickled pimentos and, and uh, uh, pickled uh, hot peppers or pickled uh, green beans and stuff, they're pickled already. So they'll last a little bit longer than... than uh, well, he's like you. He ate it so fast it didn't really yeah. matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to wash it down with a beer once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. And so it's, you're able to buy it in sour cream already at the store or market. But well, what's your a lot, of, a lot of that stuff has preservatives in it when they do it like that. Uh, if you're going to do it yourself, you, yeah. Um, vinegar and sour cream and uh, salt and pepper and mixed together uh, is, a, is a great dip, like with cucumbers and stuff like that. Wonderful, and it'll go with herring, wonderful. But mix it like I did those over there. Put a little uh, honey mustard in a, in a bowl, put some pickled herring and stir it up and put it in your serving dish or whatever. Do the same thing with the, with the uh, 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 sour cream or what, any, any of those things you add as a dip afterwards. Uh, if they haven't been bought, because you can buy some dips, um, dill, dill weed dip and stuff like that. They have preserved them in, so it would last for a, a longer period of uh, time than just mixing up your own. So, yeah. okay. Okay. All right. Any others? I still have some uh, straight from the. Huh? Did you try it? Yeah. yeah. If you want to be notified of the class uh, for next year, we do it every year. Um, make sure that we have your email address and we will send out a notification um, about a month or so before the class. Cool. All right, thank you. That was really good. Yeah. Okay. That is